In this video, we're going to kind of introduce graph theory. Graph theory is a very important branch of mathematics and computer science that, uh, you know, you could take entire courses on graph theory. It's a very large subject, and we're only going to touch the surface in these videos. And I just want to introduce the, I the idea of it in this particular video. So you might ask yourself, what is graph theory? Well, it's a branch of mathematics that began in 1736 um, and was con attributed to this mathematician, um, Euler, right? Leonhard Euler. And the idea was, is, it, is, is this is a picture, a map, of a city called Konigsberg, which doesn't exist anymore. But there was an original question of, is it possible to start somewhere in the city and to cross every bridge exactly one time, but never crossing any bridge twice. And so if you try, you'll find that you get stuck. All right, so now what? So if we try to erase part of this and not, and not do that bridge just yet, and instead come and do this bridge, then once again, we get stuck and we can't move on. So there's a fabulous video, uh, written in a, a TED Talk video, that I will include a link for in the comments for this, um, this video. It's a great video. I really recommend watching it. It is called How the Konigsberg Bridge Problem Changed Mathematics. So again, I will include a link below. But this idea of wanting to be able to cross these bridges, you may be asking yourself, well, how does that lead to graph theory? Well, the idea is, let's erase our path, is I'm going to represent each part of these land masses, I'm gonna represent this top land mass, land mass with a point. And this middle land mass, another point, this bottom one with a point, and then this, this area over on the right with a point. And then each bridge I can represent with um, what's called an edge. So we have two edges, let me use red here, from this top part to the middle part. So we're gonna have two edges there. And then there's two edges from the middle part to the bottom part. There's one edge from this bottom area up to this, this part on the right, and then there's a bridge from the middle area to the right, and one from the top area to the right. So what we can do is we can reduce this, gra this map, um, we're going to reduce the map, to this graph. And in mathematics or computer science, when we talk about graph theory, this is what a graph looks like. It's made of a combination of vertices, which are these black points. So this is a vertex, sometimes also called a node. And then the lines are edges. Right? And this entire branch of mathematics is based on this kind of a concept of a graph. So here's a graph of the London Metro. So for example, if you wanted to get on at that stop and you wanted to get off, let's say over here at that stop, what you can do is you notice that the lines are the various tracks in the subway, in the Metro. So you would need to follow, hey, follow this red line, let's use black, follow the red line, and then figure out where to get off. Ooh, that's a little bit of a tricky one, actually. Mm, maybe get off here, come up there, then go down, and then back up. I'm sure there's a better way of doing that. But the idea is, is that we can represent every stop in the metro is represented by one of these dots, and every line that the metro goes on is represented by these different colored lines. And so this is a graph of the London Metro. Here's another example, electric power grids. So in this graph of the United States, you can see all the points that the electric grid, uh, these are called the electric grid control points. 
and it forms a graph across the country. And part of the idea is, is if some power station went out, so say this one over here in New Mexico disappeared, we can route power through some of these other um, routes to get places, except this one down here on the border, there's no other way to do it, so it would be stuck. But everywhere else we could route power around. Um, over here on the right, we can see a network diagram of a high voltage transmission system. And so this depicts where the, um, how the electrical structure works for the power network. In neuroscience, maps are used, graphs are used, people are actively working on graphing the human brain. So we have all these different parts of the brain represented by these vertices, these blue vertices, and the lines represent how they are connected to other parts of the brain. And this is an active area of research. I work with a person who is working on this project, in fact. So graphing the brain is another application of graph theory. Those of you taking my class may be aware that my active area of research is machine learning, um, which includes neural networks. And neural networks are, again, an implementation of graph theory. So we have in the human brain, we have the biological networks, which are these neurons, and the neurons are connected to other neurons. And the axon of this neuron, for example, is connected to this new neuron. So the neurons are connected together. We can represent that in an artificial neural network by having these vertices connected with edges. And we can combine these and to do something called deep learning, deep machine learning, with many layers and many of many vertices or nodes in this neural network. And from that, we can do amazing things uh, in artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this is yet another application of graph theory. Here's a graph illustrating flights in the US. You can see the the airports are the vertices, and the size of the airport here is representing how big that airport is, how many routes come in and out of it. And then those green lines represent the actual individual flights. So we can see, is there a flight from um, Phoenix to, you know, can we pick a spot? We can, we can try to, if we wanted to go here, well, there's probably not a direct flight can't tell on that graph if there's a direct flight or not, but the idea would be that maybe we would fly to Denver and then to our destination. But again, we can use a graph to represent the flight paths in the United States and anywhere in the world. This is a cool project. There's something called the OPT project where they were, they try to visualize the internet. And I had to go back uh, several years to 2005 because the modern what, uh, visualizations of the internet, graphs of the internet are so large and complex, you wouldn't be able to see any detail at all. But the idea is, is if you look at some of these spots on the graph, there's a vertex right there, that's going to be a web page, a website. And that website is going to link to other websites, who will link to other websites, and so on. And so this is showing an illustration of just the connections, the links in different websites. Some websites are very self-contained, like this one. It doesn't connect to anything external, but it has many of its own pages. We can see that happen a fair amount. Um, other web pages, like this one up here, are connecting to many external websites. So again, we can represent the internet as a graph and perform graph theory applicate algorithms on it. And in fact, this is how um, searching algorithms work. When you go into Google and you search on some topic, what it does is it has constructed previously, it's done this what's called web crawling, craw crawled through this this tangled graph and pre-found uh, pages and marked them of what the interest is. So then when you search on a topic, it can look at that list and cross-reference it and take you to the page. So again, graph theory um, is how the is sort of how the internet works. <sighs> mapping, virtual mapping is one of the one of the really important applications uh, for graph theory. This is how Google Maps 
or uh, Apple Maps or any of the other mapping services work, the idea is, is from satellite maps and other maps, the intersections, or in case of Google Maps, each building will also be a vertex and they will connect based on how the roads will be the connections, the, uh, the edges. So here, this is the ver that first vertex, that intersection, and then we added three new houses or buildings. So when you look and you Google somebody's address or you Google a business, what's gonna happen is it knows, for example, that the speed limit here is 25 miles an hour, and the speed limit here may be 30 miles an hour, and the speed limit here may be 45 miles an hour. And if you have some starting point, what it's going to do is it's going to look at this graph and use a graph algorithm that can identify the shortest path to your goal. Maybe this is your goal. Okay, so start and and what it does is it takes account of the speed of both the speed limits and the lengths of those edges and can calculate a, a route for you to minimize your time. And that's how Google Maps works, is again, using all this graph theory. Okay, we're almost done with this introduction, um, but another important one, social networking, right? Anytime, all these social network out, uh, websites use graph theory to connect people and content. So in uh, examples such as Facebook or Instagram, you have you and maybe you have your friends, right? And so these are your friends and you're connected to them with an edge. Now, it's going to recommend people you might like. So it's going to find somebody like this guy over here and say, well, he's a friend of your friend. Maybe you like him. Maybe you should friend him. Or again, you can go further out and say, this is a friend of a friend. Maybe you want to friend them. And so this in this notion, this is called an acquaintance or social graph. And it can find connections. It can figure out how your friend groups are. You can do all sorts of analysis. This is how a lot of advertising and recommendation and money is made in social media. And it's uh, something that all of these companies hire people to do this fancy graph work with. And finally, this last one is kind of a silly example, but you may have heard of the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. And the idea is, is that at least at one point, Every actor in Hollywood was in some way connected to Kevin Bacon within three edges. So if you plotted this graph and these two people are connected by an edge if they've been in a movie together. And so you can find people, um, and again, this is a little from a while back, uh, Vivian Leigh worked with George Reeves, who worked with Kevin McCarthy, who worked with Kevin Bacon. And so we would call this one, two, three degrees. She has a three degrees from Kevin Bacon. And the theory is, is that all actors, and again, this is at some point always a while back, all actors uh, in Hollywood were within six degrees of Kevin Bacon. In mathematics, there's also something called an Erdos number. Um, Erdos number like that. And this is the person, excuse me, not that, not that one. There we go. Just Erdos number. And this was a mathematician. And with all the people, he wrote papers with many different other mathematicians. And that connected them into a graph who, just like Kevin Bacon, um, you can figure out what your Erdos number is. And if Erdos published a paper with this person and that person published a paper with that person and this paper person published a paper with you, um, then you would have an Erdos number of one, two, three. So these are all some general applications of graph theory. I hope you feel motivated to learn this subject now. And so next we're gonna go in and talk about some vocabulary. It's not the most exciting thing, but graph theory has its whole entire realm of its own, of its own vocabulary. So that's what we're gonna work on next.